This episode of the Wheel of Time Community Show is sponsored by Tor Books and our Patreon supporters. Hey all you Watt nerds, I'm Tom. Welcome to Dragon Mount's Watt Community Show. Shout out to the sponsor, Tor Books, who not only gave us the Wheel of Time, but remember, we got some other uh, great books out there too. You know, by even some more fantastic authors. So check them out. And of course, thanks to all of the generous Patreon supporters. We love you. We couldn't do this without you. Okay, now to jump right into the more crunchy topics that I wanted to get into, I want to start with something that has been on my mind since Sony and Amazon came onto the scene and let us know that they were doing this project. And that's visual effects. Sony and Amazon have a appropriately sized piggy bank, I think, to gift us with really amazing stuff in the effects department. So I'm pretty excited. That is to say, as long as it's done well and by someone who cares about the source material. But I think we're safe on that front. Like I said in my first video, we have some wonderful people looking over the shoulders of the creators that are working on the show and making sure they don't stray too far from the source material. Harriet McDougall, Robert Jordan's widow, Maria Simmons, Brandon Sanderson, and of course, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the resident Watt book nerd that works on the show and my friend, Sarah Nakamura. All right, back to the VFX. I am a proponent of a healthy mixture of practical and digital effects. Practical effects are produced physically without a computer or without computer generation or, you know, getting too much other post-production help or trickery. Now, this is partly because personally, I think it looks better and they can really evoke a better acting response from the actors when they have like an actual trollic or merdral standing in front of them and not, you know, like a tennis ball at the end of a pole that says like, look here or something. Now, some actors are really good at that, but you know, I just feel like it would get a better response the other way. And also because films and shows and stuff that rely heavily on the CG of the time, I don't think really hold well to the test of time. And if you want to see what I mean by that, why don't you go check out some of the older or even maybe the first two Transformer movies and watch them on a high definition TV? That's why Rafe's response, Rafe response to a particular question from someone who has similar concerns as me. What would you say the CGI budget to practical ratio is going to be? Rafe's answer, trying to do as much in camera as we possibly can. It gives me hope. Staying on the topic of Rafe's responses that I think probably have to do with practical effects. Here are three, one, two, three, other great questions. Which character has your favorite costume so far? Rafe's answer, ooh, this is tough. Probably Geofram Bornhold. Now, the costumes have been something that I've been particularly excited about, and I can't wait to see. Now, the White Cloaks have a really iconic look throughout the series. Someone in the world would immediately recognize them and people who have read the series for a long time also immediately recognize them. I feel like their uniform is supposed to bring about a feeling of safety, you know, being all crisp and straight lined and white and clean all the time. But through their actions and their words, we've all and the people in the world of The Wheel of Time have come to know them to bring something of fear and be menacing and invoke anger. So that's really quite a juxtaposition there, and I, and I can't wait to see it played out on screen, especially if Rafe is excited about this particular character's costume. Will Loyal portray the Ogier species, or will he be humanized for screen? Rafe's answer, he's an Ogier! Another theory that I've seen you all tossing around is that to save time and money, they can just make the Ogier less Ogierly. Though this response says to me, we will get the Ogier and all their hugeness and bushy-browed glory. In addition to that, I want to say never have I been excited about being wrong about one of my theories. That theory being that they were going to cut the Ogier entirely out of the show. Make them extinct or something. And trust me, being wrong is something that I've gotten extremely comfortable with over the years. What has been your favorite set so far? Rafe's answer, Faldara! Oh, light. The goose flesh again. I, when I read this, oh, I just, I got all the feels. I can't wait. The conjuring that RJ did using the mixtures of architecture and the culture and societies and, 
and social graces of different cultures throughout the real world and putting them into his, his series was just, it was fabulous. And being as the Shinarans, I feel at least, in their armor and looks and culture and the way they interact with each other, to me, feel like they're like Viking samurai or at least like, you know, Nordic Japanese cultures. So to see that fusion, which I think it is, uh, played out on the Faldara set, I, I just can't wait to see what the architecture itself looks like. Now to transition to the CG stuff. Are you using taller actors to portray the Aiel? or camera trickery. Rave's answer, trying to get tall folks, but I'm less concerned with height and more concerned with acting ability. Now this question brings to mind uh, something else that I wanna call out. There are a lot of toxic people out there. Not this person, this person's fine. But uh, it brings to mind certain other people. And it's said in the mean to see how many of those other people we had in the Watt fandom, particularly during the casting announcements. Now to put that hatefulness aside for a second, I wanna also, I wanna get into some of the more idiotic things that we saw too, like, he can't play Perrin, his eyes aren't yellow. I saw that, and the person was serious, not joking. Or, that person can't play Nan, his hair isn't long. Or my favorite, Maureen, Rosemary can't play Maureen, she's too tall. I want those people to look at these two pictures for a minute. Orlando Bloom, or Legolas, does not have blue eyes. And while they were recording this, because that other picture was taken while they were recording this, had a shaved head. So, you know, no long blonde hair. Suri and McKellen, no beard, no long hair, can't do magic. Neither could Gandalf, but that's a story for another time. And according to the trivia for the movies, John Rhys Davies, you know, Gimli, he is the tallest actor in the Fellowship, taller than Sir Ian McKellen, Legolas, all of them. So they can do some really stunning, interesting things with camera trickery and post-production. So all you wool heads out there, all right, just uh, simmer down. Simmer down a little bit, all right? Okay, all right, you ready? We're gonna go to the big one now. Something that everyone, I mean, I know I have been wondering about since I heard there was a possibility of a show. How are you planning to handle the visualization of Weaves? Any little tidbits? Rafe's answer. We're trying to stay as true to the books as possible. I've been giving a bunch of VFX folks long diatribes about channeling, weaves, threads, earth versus air, etc. And their early stuff has started coming in, and it looks awesome. I screamed when Rosamund started channeling. Now, this is pivotal, and it's something that's got to be done so perfectly, so right. And Rafe saying that he goes on diatribes about the channeling and the threads and the weaves, and then the differences between like a thread of earth and a thread of air. That makes me immensely more comfortable and uh, I feel safe that he's doing the right thing and that it's gonna look great. <laughs> and <laughs> if his scream is anything like my scream about seeing my girl Moraine channel for the first time, I'm sure it would have sounded something like, <laughs> Now to get away from the video for a second, let's take a dive into the audio. Will there be a soundtrack? Who's the composer? Rafe's answer, of course, David Buckley, plus a few incredible musical guests we've already had. Uh, who is David Buckley? I didn't know this, but I already love David's stuff, and I'm sure a lot of you people do as well. So he's done Evil, which is a fantastic show. I love it. Kaja Herbers, Mike Coulter, Asif Manvi, Michael Emerson, you know, Ben from Lost. The music in Evil really puts like a, like a fear into my heart, into my soul sometimes. So I really cannot wait to see uh, what he can do with the, with the Wheel of Time. Particularly, he's on four episodes, including the first one, so we'll see. He's also done some video games that I'm pretty sure maybe one or two people have played. Batman Arkham VR for PlayStation and Batman Arkham Knight. Yes or no? Have you had to make any cuts, be it scene or character, that have been painful for you? Rafe's answer? Yes. Oh! Oh! Yeah! Rafe! Oh. Will we see the prologue from the Eye of the World on screen in season one? Rafe's answer? You will hear that phrase. All right, now, this one, this is my fault. This is actually my question, one of my questions that he answered. And I think I just worded it all wrong because, you know, I'm a genius. Now, I, what I think Rafe thought I was asking was, 
The wheel of time turns, and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend. Legend fades to myth, and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. But what I was actually asking was about Dragon Mount. You know, the prologue of the book, the, the beginning with Ishi and Lucerin being all back sh shirt crazy. So, Rafe, if you see this, let me know if it's that, if we're going to see that in the show at all. Not in the very beginning, obviously, but maybe if it's like, you know, a flashback or even just a story from maybe Maureen or something. Or you know what? I'll just ask it better in your next AMA and hopefully your answer. And now to leave you guys where I'm pretty sure it's going to begin. Similar to Tom performing in an inn, what other iconic moment filmed stands out to you? Rafe's answer, Rand and Tam walking through the Westwood. Oh, the field, the field. All right, that's all I got for you guys for now. So a quick recap, I think we're safe on the VFX side. Uh, yay, the Ogier are staying, and they're going to be Ogierly. Woohoo. And uh, Rafe is obviously a hilarious person, and I love him. And I can't wait for the show. I want it to come out right now. Please come out right now. Come out now. Let me know what you guys think. You know, leave me some comments. You know, likes, share, share us with your friends, your family, even if they don't know or like the Wheel of Time. Who knows? Maybe we'll grow on them. Anyway, catch you later. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end. As always, please click on that subscribe button and click the thumbs up. And please leave us a comment. We love comments, especially positive ones. And if you have a friend that enjoys the Wheel of Time, please let them know about us and our show. Share the Wheel of Time well. Special thanks to our sponsor for the show, Four Books, as well as our amazing Patreon community. If you would like to learn more about how the show is made or get some additional insights into the Wheel of Time, then you too can become a Patreon supporter. And of course, follow Dragon Out on social media. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.